Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of There Will Be Expletives. I'm Jeff. I'm Ron. And we got a bunch of news to get through today because New York Comic Con happened. And I've actually noticed, um, I think it's kind of cool how companies like Marvel and uh, I forget, what's the company that has Power Rangers and John Wick? Is Saban. That- oh, uh, Lionsgate. Lionsgate. I, I think it's kind of cool how some companies are either specifically keeping some of their reveals for the New York Comic Con slate or just straight up doing all of their stuff there like Lionsgate did. Yeah, that's um, that's interesting. I wonder, is the advantage to that just not having to compete with Marvel and the like at straight up at, and Warner Brothers at the San Diego Comic Con? Well, they're still competing technically with Marvel, just not with really, I guess, the movie division. Although I believe they had some Doctor Strange stuff, but obviously we're not going to talk about it because we're trying to stay spoiler free on it. But um, yeah, I think it's just you get more of the spotlight that way. Yeah. Because like, I mean, Power it's... Rangers right now gets a lot more buzz than it would against like Justice League and stuff like that. I guess thanks to the internet, there's not really an exposure loss. So, yeah, I guess they probably are more in the limelight there than they would have been. Because John, yeah. John Wick and Power Rangers probably wouldn't have gone over as big as any Star Wars news or anything like that. And that's they would have been overshadowed, I guess. Or like at, uh, at San Diego, like just the Marvel stuff alone, like they dropped st- footage from Spider-Man, Guardians, Thor 3, like list just goes on and on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, our first bit of news this week, I think, th- I don't know if this came out during comic-con or, or shortly after it but guy Ritchie is in talks to helm a live action adaptation of aladdin and i did a complete double take because those are just such a it's such a random combination you know i did a double take at first but it's like the more i think about it the more sense that kind of makes to me uh, so I, I know you're I, gonna I have to explain this one to me because i still Okay, like my thing with Guy Ritchie, I love Guy Ritchie and I like most of his movies. But with Guy Ritchie, his movies always seem to be a Guy Ritchie movie starring a different group of characters. Like in particular, that new King Arthur movie, that trailer is purely a Guy Ritchie movie starring King Arthur characters. Mm, I've never seen his movies that way. I've always seen them as you know you're watching a Guy Ritchie movie when you or watching one, but they all have their own flavor to me when I watch them. Even the two Sherlock Holmes movies are same yet different. Well, he's like, when I look at that, that King Arthur trailer, that is purely, he's shooting it and portraying it exactly the same way he did Sherlock Holmes. It's just now he's happening to be starring King Arthur. See, I didn't Uh, see it that way. I I I, I didn't see it that way because I saw Sherlock Holmes as good. So... I don't know. Well, you're biased because you dislike King Arthur too, so that didn't really go in your favor. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, I think he's gonna have to drop some of his his specific style in order to make Aladdin work. I don't know. I think I think that works pretty well. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I like it. Because if you watch well, Aladdin, what, what about his style, like specifically, like lends towards Aladdin for you? Um. It's like, if you just think about some of the crazy, like, wonky bullshit that's in, like, Sherlock Holmes that kind of gives it, the, the, I guess, the charm that it does, um, there's a lot of stuff like that, similar to that, in Aladdin, aside from, you know, drugging dogs so that they pass out and shit like that, but... I just there's a lot of shenanigans in in both movies, and he does stuff like that through all of his movies. Oh. I think he'll get. I think he he'll get the the tone of it right, but I don't know. There's just something about it. Like it's it's not that he can't do it. It's that Aladdin is a very sp- specific property, and Guy Ritchie's films usually have a specific flair to them too, which they could end up working. I really like Guy Ritchie, so I'm going to be seeing it no matter what. Um, I don't know. It just seemed very odd to me, but they could have done a lot worse. When you stop and think about um, Aladdin and Abu and the genie and just some of the shit that they pull, some of the stuff that um, Genie does, some of the stuff, some of the like mean stuff that uh, Jafar does, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. To me, it just kind of fits, especially with Genie. 
um, the way Genie does all the impressions he does, all the wacky stuff that he does. To me, it just, it, it kind of fits. The, the movie, if you watch Aladdin, it's dark in tone, especially for a kid's movie. And to break that up, it has a lot of silly, goofy, wacky shenanigans that happen um, through Genie, Aladdin himself, and Abu. So, I don't know. His movies are kind of like that. When you think about the Sherlock yeah, I, Holmes movies, how how serious and dark they are, but Sherlock Holmes himself as the character, you know, um, just they breaks have that over the up. top goofy moments. But yeah, I, I could see that. Uh, I and, think you know, and it's not break. just it's not just Sherlock Holmes. It's just that's the one that sticks out in my mind because uh, I I the more I thought about it, the more I ended up comparing Aladdin to his Sherlock Holmes movies. But there's yeah. there's stuff like that in Man from Uncle. There's stuff like that in a lot of his movies. Um, I think the make or break portion of it is how they do the genie. See, and what's interesting about this, are we still talking about the same movie that we reported on a couple months ago? Because originally they didn't say they were going to do Aladdin. They were going to do a prequel to Aladdin that was how this the is, genie became is, the genie. This is not this right now what we're talking about. Um, and I didn't know either until I read the article just a, a couple of hours ago. Um, they are doing now an adaptation like Beauty and the Beast and Mulan. This is going to be an adaptation. This is not going to be a prequel anymore. So that's interesting. So what changed? Because my prediction back then was it was basically a dry run to see if they could pull off Genie before they went after one of the most beloved properties that they have of all time. I and think what changed is they've gotten they got a shit ton of money from Jungle Book. They have had nothing but glowing response from like Beauty and the Beast, where I don't think it. I, I mean, I, ventu- I th- think eventually everything they made between like what was it like eighty seven when the first one came out and the nineties, I think it's all on its way. Even some of the stuff that wasn't that's famous but not as up there. Like I bet it, I bet you will eventually even get Hunchback of Notre Dame just because it's a property that wouldn't that they surprise can, me. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's completely make or break depending on the genie because I didn't know this either until I read this article. Did you know Robin Williams actually had it in his will? They are not allowed to use any of his uh, work, his unused work as the genie. He specifically did not want that character touched, uh, you know, post uh, posthumously. Right. So I, if they're smart, what I would do is what we talked about before: get the guy who's been doing it for Broadway. Who's yeah. apparently really, really good at it. If they don't do it that way, I, I mean, I think it's really, really delicate how you handle it. As I said, to me, this seems very risky because it is one of their most beloved properties. It's my favorite one. It's probably and, my favorite too. And of all the of all the Disney movies and stuff, you know, it's the one I know the most about. It's the one that yeah. I can play front to back in my head right now if I wanted to. So, I mean, I watched the fuck out of that movie and um, Return of Jafar. I fucking loved Return of Jafar. I've, that's that's one of the sequels that kind of blew my brain, um, even as a kid, because generally speaking, even children know that the Disney movie sequels are terrible movies compared to the original one. But Return to Jafar, somehow they recaptured that whole movie to me. So, are you saying Lion King three and a half wasn't a cinematic masterpiece? <laughs> you shut your goddamn whore mouth. <laughs> yeah, it... Uh, I never saw um, Prince of Thieves or whatever, King of Thieves, whatever the third Aladdin was, but my wife said that it was just as good as Return of Jafar. So I don't remember Return of Jafar. I actually need to go back and watch all of them again. because You do, I, because uh, Jafar as a genie is what I would be like as a genie. Like, I he, remember the first one pretty well. He just fucks with the guy. But, the poor guy finds the black lamp, and Jafar just fucks with him every wish. It's fantastic. I get behind that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, we'll ju- that's just a total wait and see. Uh, he's just in talk. It's not official, but we have just figured we'd talk about it because it's, it's an interesting choice if it goes through. It is an interesting choice, and I, I kind of like. At first, you know, I didn't. I did a double take, not because I don't like. You know, I don't dislike Guy Ritchie. I don't. It's not that I think he can't do it. It was a very odd, interesting choice, and then the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. So. 
Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Uh, something I'm kind of on that same kind of mindset as with as well is Power Rangers, and that was one of the big drops at New York Comic Con this weekend, this past weekend. We got our very very first look at footage from it, actual footage. We've gotten a bunch of posters, some better than others. We've gotten a bunch of character stills, but now we have our first teaser trailer. So you are the resident Power Ranger fanatic. I will let you <laughs> take it away. Um, I I don't know. It, a lot of stuff that I've seen hasn't necessarily been positive. Uh, I think you're cautiously, yeah, you're just being cautious about it. I think I don't. I was about to say cautiously optimistic. I I think you're just being cautious about the movie itself but i would have i would have liked to have been optimistic <laughs> i just it I, I, you you give your points and then i'll talk about what i thought of it i really enjoyed the trailer i don't know i i really liked it it kind of blew me away what they're doing but they're taking it so much more serious than i thought they were going to so. okay my thing with it i don't have an issue with the tone i like the tone I think the movie could be very good. I don't think it's a bad trailer. It's just, to me, what they focus on so heavily in this trailer. And first of all, I'm of the opinion this is a quote unquote by them, a teaser trailer. This is like two minutes long. This is a full on yeah. trailer no, trailer. I, I've got it running in the background right now. It's two and a half minutes. What I would have liked, and they even, I think in the description on YouTube, they even call it a teaser. It's the name. Yeah. Official teaser trailer. I'm sorry. Lionsgate, a two and a half minute trailer is not a teaser. It's a fucking trailer. Well, that's what going, I would that's, have, that's going to bring me to my next point after you finish your point. What I would have liked from this is a straight up thirty second teaser of what I really, really am going into the theater to see. What I got was a two and a half minute rundown of all of the CW teenage angst that's going to be in the movie that I'm not there to see. Yeah. So I don't think it's necessarily bad, but what I got. What I wanted out of this trailer was 15 seconds of Pacific Rim with the Zords. You don't even have to show them to me. Just let me hear them and let me hear Brian Cranston talk. But what I got was almost like a... You know like how CW does trailers for like their upcoming season sometimes? Yes. This reminds me more of like that trailer for The Flash from San Diego Comic-Con. If you remember that one, how it was just kind of like the angst situations of the, the first couple of episodes. Yeah. What I, I did, it's not that it's bad, it's just I wanted to see, I wanted to be excited about it, and they didn't really give me anything like that. Um, the way I look at this trailer in particular, compared to every other movie trailer I've ever seen in my life, what it seems to me that they mean by teaser trailer is they gave you a taste of the costumes... Um, at the very end, I don't even. I don't even know if I would qualify that as a taste. Like you get like it, half it, of one costume, kinda, and it's all pixelated. I don't. It, it was a, it was a taste of them morphing more than the costumes, but I feel like the focus, the whole point of the trailer, um, is more how different the characters are from the ones you remember. I don't think I think because it doesn't show you the Zords and it doesn't show you any combat or anything is what they mean by teaser trailer. I, I think I don't think it's a bad trailer, but I don't think the people making it made smart decisions on what to put in it. I think they completely missed the mark and actually put more work into it than was needed. What would have gotten that crowd at San Diego and me personally more psyched would have been 15 seconds of Brian Cranston's voiceover now, and sound effects. What, I don't know. I think it's just a fundamental difference on what you and I want from our teaser trailers and what Lionsgate with this trailer seemed to be wanting to show. They they pulled a typical Hollywood and had a like a a, a below expectation trailer um you and i have mentioned several times how uh ghostbusters was you know everyone i ever talked to loved that movie 
But that tra- that those trailers are some of the worst movie trailers I've ever seen in my life. I totally agree. And that's what this situation kind of reminds me of. It's a much better trailer than those, don't get me wrong. I agree. But I think just how the Ghostbusters trailer showed you all the wrong things and missed the mark overall is what this trailer did. Now, nostalgia-wise, and as a fan of Power Rangers, there's a lot of gems in there that I did get out of it that made me really excited for the movie. Um, The two biggest ones is it's still set in Angel Grove. There's a big old Welcome to Angel Grove sign right at the beginning of the trailer. And the other being that it makes... I feel like... (laughs) There's a lot of back and forth on stuff I've been reading online about if this is good or not. But to me, the TV show always implied that they had special abilities outside of their suits also. And the the support that I have for that is the Putty Patrollers. There's always scenes of the Putty Patrollers terrorizing people and people trying to fight them. And the Putty Patrollers don't even notice people trying to fight them. They're that much stronger. And the Rangers always take them out without morphing. They always take them out without any weapons, without any suits, anything like that. So, to me, it was always kind of implied that they were changed physically. Like, they have some abilities outside of their suits. Um, This made it much more apparent because they're they're doing the whole um, Sam Raimi Spider-Man thing where he's jumping uh, from rooftop to rooftop over a chasm. Yeah. Um, which that annoyed me. I'm like, you couldn't come up with something more original than what they did in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie, but... Um, did they do that in The Flash, too? I think they, they did. hopping over a canyon? I think they did when he was having issues um, getting faster or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they did that, too. Um, what it kind of feels like is they're trying to do a combination of hitting nostalgia buttons and market to the CW like Arrow Flash Legends fans or something. Cuz that's what the trailer kind of feels like. It looked like. like a very very bland CW mo- like it looked to me like if CW got the rights to do a Power Ranger TV movie. Yeah. That is what it felt like to me. What I, and since this is like a 150 million dollar budgeted Power Ranger movie, I wanted to be I wanted to get the feeling like I was watching Pacific Rim, not a CW made-for-TV movie. Yeah, it it makes me wonder if they consider this a teaser trailer and not trailer one, since it's two and a half movies. What oh, two and a half minutes? Sorry, it's probably, it could feel like two and a half movies. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but um, I'm very curious what they would put in their trailer one. Yeah. Again, I'm being heavily critical of the trailer. I've, I I think the movie could still be very, very good. Although I will say, even before I had it pointed out to me, I also got uh, a lot of the Chronicle vibes that people were picking up on online. I never saw it. Uh, after this, I'm going to send you the trailer. The trailer for Chronicle is very, very similar to this, even to the point to where they get their powers from a cave. Isn't Chronicle... The- um? Trank? Yeah, uh, it's uh, Trank and Max Landis. And it's actually a really, really good movie, which is a shame that uh, fucking Trank's career went the way that it did with Fantastic (laughs) Fantastic Four. Because Chronicle, with that Max Landis script, is actually a really good movie. (laughs) It's a shame that his career tranked. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll send you the trailer, though, but I got immediate Chronicle vibes off of it, and not in a good way. It's very reminiscent of it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it wasn't like I have been back and forth on this. Like they have like really, really like I like the uh, the the Bill Hader casting. I like the Brian Cranston casting. I actually re- the scene I actually liked from the trailer was the like second or two we got of Elizabeth Banks. Like Rear of Hulse actually looked kind of cool. Eh, that's one of the things I'm down on still. Well. We're coming at it from two totally different sides. I have zero nostalgia for this. You have heavy nostalgia for it. Yeah. So she reminded wh- me more of the Tooth Fairy in Darkness Falls than she did Rita Repulsa. See, I I like that because that's just something. It's just something different for it. I mean, I think 
I don't know. It's such a weird property, and I'm really, really fascinated to see how this movie ends up going now, over. I, I will say this. While I am approaching this from a very heavy, nostalgic point, you and I have talked before about how like, I... I under I I can disconnect. I understand the difference in this movie versus say the series or the other movies that they've done. This is going to be completely different and I'm on board for that. You know, I'm not going to be like some of the people in the YouTube comments are pissed off that it's not the series. That's the point. That, that's the whole point of this movie is to not be the series. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it either way. I think even if from a Power Rangers fan, I'm not happy with it. I can probably still enjoy it from a Pacific Rim fan point view or something. Those parts better be good. Or I'm gonna be disappointed because if it's two, if it's two and a half hours and two hours and fifteen minutes of it are CW angst, I'm gonna be pissed. I will be very pissed because I don't give a shit about any of these characters. I'm only there to see the last twenty minutes of the movie, honestly. <laughs> I think with the amount of money they've spent on costume design and stuff, hopefully there's more combat in it than that. But The fact that we are four or five months out and we still haven't seen any fight scenes from this movie, that concerns me. I, I f- really feel like they either haven't done their focus groups yet, so they haven't put out the trailer that spoils the movie for you yet, or they um, they're just going to try to keep it all locked up and all the trailers are going to be angst i i don't see i think it's either i mean okay here's here's my here's my point of reference with this this is both Lionsgate, this and john wick right yes we get a whole lot of action in the john wick trailer john wick comes out before this you didn't get shit from the power rangers trailer i'm pretty sure that comes out in march the month after john wick I'm a little concerned. This movie is sitting there, and they haven't done like three fourths of special effects. They did enough to get out those sword tra- those sword posters, and that's it. And it's still on the like the cutting uh, room floor. Uh, it, I mean, it, that's kind of the feeling I get is that it's not ready yet. I, I'm just saying it better be fucking good because if this movie sucks, the Power Ranger fans are going to burn their building down because Power Ranger fans like you and Phil are fucking hardcore about Power Rangers. <laughs> so let's so let's transition then as we spent a lot of time on this. You mentioned John Wick. That's next up on our list. Let's talk about that goddamn John Wick trailer. That John Wick trailer, shut up and take my goddamn ten dollars <laughs> and we can move on to the next topic. <laughs> let's let's be honest. We didn't need a trailer to have our ass in the seat. <laughs> but dude, See, this this is this is what I wanted. <laughs> this is like, hey, dog, we heard you like that John Wick. So we got you some more motherfucking John Wick. <laughs> this is like it is like cuz like what's cool too, we we get this John Wick chapter 2 trailer. We get a whole lot of glimpses of the action sequences. They and we don't, still don't really know what the fuck the movie's about. I was going to say, they don't mention any story plot because they know you're there for the murder plot, not the story plot. <laughs> see, see, John Wick gets me. Yeah. CW Power Rangers, I don't think, gets me. I, I, I feel like a bunch of college students made the trailer for Power Rangers. And Netflix made the John Wick trailer. <laughs> fuck yes, they did. <laughs> But, it's so good. Oh my god, dude, it's so good. More Ian it's, McShane. Um, I believe I saw John Leguizamo's added, listed. Yeah, they added um, Lawrence Fishburne. They got Neo and Morpheus back together. And then wasn't it common in Ace of Spades? So he's used to over-the-top action. God, I need this movie in my life right now. Oh, uh, I know. You know what's kind of funny, though, is they show a scene of... Smoking Aces, John, that's what that movie is called. The song yeah. was Ace of Spades. Hey. Uh, John Wick walks in with a, with a, with his dog. If I was if I was the villain in John Wick Chapter Two, my first order of business is buy a bulletproof vest for the motherfucking dog. That is <laughs> number one thing you need to do. My favorite part of this trailer is the very beginning and the very end when they ask him the style of his suit and he says tactical. And then the very end when he goes to pull out his gun and everyone just fucking runs. Like it's just like roaches when you turn on the light. Like they just scatter. And he hasn't even pulled out his gun yeah. yet. He's going for the gun. 
I really like Lawrence Fishburne too, so I thought he was a cool addition to it. Yeah, yeah, Morpheus and Neo reunited. Oh See, that, my that, god! That, that just proves that all of this is happening in the Matrix. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I w- like. I want to go watch. I might watch John Wick tonight, just because. <laughs> fucking you, adore that movie. Do you think Mockingbird's in it? Because I get the feeling she's not dead since they didn't show her dead and they showed everybody else in the movie dead. <laughs> they showed everyone else die gloriously. Yeah. Actually, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I, okay, it comes down to like Ian McShane is a cold-blooded motherfucker, it seems. I don't really think he let her walk away from that. I think it was just a stylistic choice. Mm. I'd be cool if she came back because she was really cool in that movie. Yeah. I don't know. I get the feeling she's not dead. I don't think she'll show up here. Uh, if it was me, I would save her character for like a third movie. Yeah, like a, they've and they actually, that's actually another thing. They've already confirmed they're developing a third one already. Oh fuck yes! Fuck they can yes. make John Wick until the day I die, Ron, and I will be in the theater for everyone. <laughs> like Spaceballs, John Wick five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> And I will have my ass in that theater five thousand times, my friend. <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, so good. Seriously, so good. Go go and watch. If nothing else from this podcast, go watch the John Wick trailer, please. It's so good. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, next day, we got some comic news to talk. Uh, Zack Snyder tweeted out an, uh, the first image of Mara from uh, Justice League, played by Amber Heard. What do you think, Ron? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's my review of it. Um, uh, Amber Heard, thank you, Zach. Yep, much obliged. Much obliged. Um, I, I I was surprised at how good it looked when I saw it, and then I remember they made Wonder Woman's costume look fantastic. So I I really should stop doubting anything that they ever do costume wise, except for Lex Luthor's. Let's just forget that ever happened. <laughs> Let's just forget Lex ever happened. For the love of God, Lex Luthor uh, Jr. Yeah. That was the problem. I think their uh, yeah, I think their costume department. I agree with you. Has just kind of crushed it. I mean, I think the Superman costume is really cool too. Yes, and that's a like ever. I mean, everyone shot on Man of Steel, obviously, but us. But I actually thought they adapting that costume to kind of work for a realistic, more realistic Superman movie. Actually, that looked kind of cool. I always thought Batman's costume looked a lot more realistic than Superman's for some reason. Superman's, like even in Christopher Reeve stuff, you know, like it looks good because it's straight off the comic page, but that in real life, he looks like a cartoon character out in real life. Yeah, and then with Henry Cavill in that costume, you actually kind of buy it. Yeah. They did a good job. And then, but, like you said, the, the most... The, the most uh, ridiculous one they nailed was the Wonder Woman costume. That thing is a work of art. Yes. And she should look like a cartoon character as well. Dude, changing her costume and even her boots to armor. Like, her boots were greaves, dude. I mean, those fucking machine gun bullets from World War One era just bouncing off of her shins. Because she, yeah. she has her shield up and her greaves are armor, you know, her boots are armor, so she's not unprotected below her shield anymore, so bullets were bouncing off her shield and her shins. It was fan-fucking-tastic. And the lasso glows, Jeff. Was. The lasso uh, glows. <laughs> yeah. When, and when the New 52 rolled around, whoever had the idea to make the sword a more uh, important part of her character and have it front and center with her costume especially it's not like a sometimes thing like she always has her sword on her i think that was a cool touch too because in the trailer in the, comics, in the trailer her dress in the back is her yes sword. that's fucking money man uh originally in the comics and even in like the uh in like the i mean it's it's the 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 early 2000s justice league cartoon is phenomenal but back then that was kind of the original wonder woman design from the comics her main um, bit of offense when she isn't using the lasso is you know, deflecting stuff off of her gauntlets. But when she does a fucking sword, it makes her more intimidating to me. Right, because then she's like Final Fantasy deflecting bullets and stuff like that with it. Yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was genius. But um, and no, everything yeah, I like everything the, about Wonder Woman lately is genius, dude. Even down to her fucking music. 
yes, the best theme they've come up with oh, easily so far for their movies. Dun, uh, dun, yeah, I like dun, the, I like dun, the uh, to get dun. back on the topic of Mera though. I really really like the actor's choice. I like Amber Heard. Though she's a good choice. Yes, and I I like how um, the costume actually looks like it's something they would perform underwater too. Like it's very and an, another decision that their costume department is making in general that I. I, another decision they're making that I love is nothing from their costumes looks new. And I really love that. Like her crown or whatever looks old and worn and it's not shiny or anything like that. Like her necklace is shinier than the thing on her head. Yeah. And stuff. Like everything looks like it's been around forever. I like the Momoa costume too, by the way. Oh, God, I know. Dude, uh, everything about Aquaman. Oh, I cannot believe that I'm going to end up liking Wonder Woman and Aquaman better than the movie that had Batman and Superman in it. And Lex Luthor. And Lex Luthor. And Doomsday. Uh, I, I what, just, a fucking, what a travesty. But let's let, yeah, we got to move on. Uh, all right, next up, uh, we got one more bit of movie news. Forrest Whitaker has joined the already badass cast of Black Panther. Can they crush any more? Nope. Is there anyone that's left it. in Hollywood they haven't that's, walked up? <laughs> that's the cherry. That that they have reached the, the pinnacle of crushing it. Because I'm pretty sure... You know Forrest Whitaker is in Rogue One, right? Yes. Pretty sure they had him in the Disney Studios. He walked by Kevin Feige's office and he's just like, Huh, I haven't put him in anything yet. Why haven't I done that? Black Panther done. Money the, the, in the bank. The casting director for Black Panther was just sitting there shooting paper wads in his wastebasket trying to come up with an idea as he walks down the hall past his office. Yeah. Like, I swear to God, it's almost like they have to have Google alerts set to <laughs> actors that aren't currently in Marvel movies just to be able to come up with people who aren't already in the fucking Marvel movies. <laughs> they, they have Google alerts for certain actors' names that pop up in headlines. So the Rogue One trailer came out, and then they're like, ah, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> no one saw those Fantastic Four movies. Fuck it, Chris Evans is Captain America, man. <laughs> But yeah, Forrest Whitaker, he is playing... Uh, now, again, I don't know jack shit about Black Panther other than he was fucking amazing in Civil War and I cannot wait for the movie. Uh, so I don't know who he's playing, but his character's name is Zuri. I don't know how to pronounce it either. I could be butchering it. But he's apparently uh, kind of like an advisor for both... Uh, is it T'Challa? Is that, his, is that Black Panther's name? Sure. I think it's... <laughs> I think it's T'Challa and T'Chanka. T'Chanka was his dad. He he played an advisor. I, I had some T'Chanka earlier tonight. It's delicious. The chocolate's <laughs> my favorite. It does sound like an entree, unfortunately. But um, he's he in the movie. He will have played an advisor to both his dad and the current Black Panther. So that's a pretty cool role for Forrest Whitaker. I think. You, you know what's funny is I looked up a picture of of Zuri. I'm gonna send this to you in the Skype chat. Um. It looks like the caveman version of his character from Rogue One. I can get behind that. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> that's like the, the first time you see him in Rogue One. That's exactly what he looks like. <laughs> I'm okay with Forrest Whitaker being in all the movies. I really like Forrest Whitaker. I really like Forrest Whitaker too. It's, it's Marvel. It's going to be good. This this whole next phase is fucking redonkulous, dude. I don't even know where to begin with that phase. It's just insanity. All gonna be gold. Even it, like even the ones that aren't amazing are still gonna be like eight out of ten. Like <laughs> it's it such a letdown. Eight point five out of ten. Seven point five out of ten would not recommend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna keep talking Marvel, but we're transitioning over to television. And hey, Ron. <laughs> How about that Iron Fist fella? <laughs> oh my god. It's going to be our favorite. We've said it again and again because we've shat on the idea of doing this before Punisher so much, but it it's looks so, pretty goddamn good. It's such a badass trailer. This is again, this trailer shows me what I want to fucking see. I want to see <laughs> Iron Fist beating the fuck out of people. Dude, Danny I Rand. Got that. Danny Rand is the Goku that I did not get out of Dragon Ball Evolution. Well, dude, 
No one got anything out of Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution got nothing out of Dragon the Ball Evolution. The only thing Dragon Ball Evolution got out of anyone was $8 out of their wallet. That is all that it accomplished. <laughs> and normally, I don't like... I don't like stuff in trailers like this, but... Like what? Because Marvel did it, and they did it so fantastically, and they synced it with the music that's in the trailer and everything. The final defender... The final defender... The final defender arrives was fan-fucking-tastic in the trailer. Yeah, that gets you... Never even read an Iron Fist comic in my life, and that got me pumped seeing that. (laughs) It's like, fuck yes. Yes. Uh, That trailer... Here's my question, though. I'm guessing that the character Danny Rand does not womanize much because if anyone ever spots Iron Fist out in the street, they know that dragon logo and then he has it tattooed onto his fucking chest. Yeah, not very subtle. It's not very subtle. But I I do love how there's a part of the trailer that... Um, I forget the girl's name. I never knew her character's name, but she's from The Walking Dead, and she has what looks like Michonne's sword. So when it cuts to her walking around what looks like the prison scene from Walking Dead, it, who is it, she in Walking Dead? She is the chick with the pigtails that sleeps with the the red haired guy, the big red haired guy. She's in this. Yes. Are you sure that's her? I'll go to IMDb once again, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't remember seeing her. It, it To me, it when it so, shows her, it looks like a scene straight out of Walking Dead. Um, Iron yeah, I don't, Fist. I don't believe it was her, but I could be mistaken. I'm pretty sure you are. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Now I, just, now I can't even remember what her fucking name is on Walking Dead. Uh, so, that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, She's um you said dating um Abraham. Yes, says, Abraham. Right? Um Is this her? The images on IMDb's actual website are so fucking small. Mm, let's see. Rosita? Is that that's her name in the show, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna look up Walking Dead because I can't fucking find it. Her name is Christian Serratos. Yeah, I don't believe it's her. She was in Twilight, though. It looks a lot like her. If it's not... What's her name? Yeah, she, Christian Serratos. Yeah, Rosita in Walking Dead uh, is her most recent thing. Yeah, she. It, it looks like her, but it doesn't look like it's actually her. I still think it's her. <laughs> Even though I have fact checked you, <laughs> <laughs> someone call the fact checkers. Let's, uh, see. let's see. On Iron Fist, uh, it is Jessica Henwick who is that character. Jessica Stroop. Oh, it's the girl from. Um, yeah, that's right. Because she was one of the the Sand Viper girls from Game of Thrones. That's what she's from. You remember the one who was always um, not the not the crazy flirty one, but the other one. She's also in Force Awakens. Who's Jess Tester in Force Awakens? Must have been a background character. But you, do you remember her on Game of Thrones? Now she's one of the Sand Viper girls. Nope. You know you know the crazy one who was always flirting with Braun. Yeah. Not her, but her sister who's <laughs> always with her. Well, that doesn't help me, Jeff. That was the one that I liked. <laughs> She's the one who was in the cell with her, but not the one doing the flirting. That's who she was, I believe. Uh, but yeah, we've gone completely off topic. Um, no, that never Iron happens Fist, on this show. Iron Fist looks completely badass, and I cannot wait for March 17th. Uh, they oh, quite she's a bit. the boring one, I think, in Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Oh god! Not that necessarily that she was boring. It was just like they never really gave her anything to say. She was of, just there. Of the three, she's the boring one. Um, yeah, they had quite a bit of Marvel Netflix stuff that we talked about at New York Comic Con. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about the Punisher. They talk have yes. confirmed a 2017 release date. Thank you. 
So are we getting when is Defenders? Okay, here's the thing. So far we have confirmed Iron Fist is March of twenty seventeen. Okay. And we have confirmation that both Punisher and Defenders are twenty seventeen, but not dated exactly. So we've got three so, things next year. There's three things next year. The thing is I'm, we always assumed because of what they've been doing is there was going to be a spring one and a fall one and that obviously Iron Fist would be in the spring and Defenders would be in like October or something. But this thing with the Punisher is making me think that they have fast-tracked the Punisher in order to have Punisher out in the summertime and then have him not be as prominent a role as the other four but be in the Defenders in a smaller capacity. I think that's what's going to happen. I could see that. I, I think that's something you and I predicted a long time ago um, before the official announcement of his show, if I recall. But Because uh, I think we said that he was just too popular to not have in Defenders, and then they finally announced his show. So, yeah. Um, I, dude, that's crazy. that we're gonna. So we're going to have most likely spring, summer, and fall, I would imagine, Netflix, Marvel stuff. I can't wait. Now I have to set aside three weekends. <laughs> and that's not even in addition. So, There's three movies coming out next year, too. I'm pretty sure Guardians. Let's see. It's Guardians, Spidey. What's the third one next year? Thor? Thor. Thor's next year. So we got three movies and three fucking Netflix shows next year. Uh, when is Daredevil season three? Is that 18? Surely I think not. it's going to be spring of 2018. Really? That's a long time. Well, it won't feel that way, though, when you have three movies and three shows to fully binge in the meantime. Hmm. Uh, I'm fascinated to see how they end up um, balancing out the Defenders. Yeah. Because uh, we've, t- we've seen a team-up movie done three times now with them. Uh, if, you, if you count Civil War, it's basically like Avengers 2.5. But it's Avengers two. True, touche. <laughs> uh, but how do you balance out a thirteen episode show with those characters plus a villain that we'll talk about in a second plus Punisher plus they have to have all of their supporting characters splashed in periodically, at least the major supporting characters. Yeah, I don't know if they. What gives me um, a really really good hope for it though is it's the guys who did Daredevil season two. And they had a lot to balance, and I think they did a pretty good job. They so. did a really good job for having the number of characters that they had. Yeah, you have to continue the Daredevil stuff, introduce Punisher and Elektra. It was a lot to do, and I think they did a really good job. But um, Oh, and they also confirmed, while we're talking about the supporting characters, for the Punisher, Karen Page, Deborah Ann Wall will return in the Punisher show, which I thought was a pretty cool little touch, because her and... Uh, Bernthal, I thought had some pretty good scenes together while we're talking about season two. Yeah, it was it was cool, um, and I'm fine with that. Even though I, she's the one character I really don't like. But uh, yeah, I mean it makes sense. They they need to tie stuff together still somehow. You Rosario Dawson Doss, is too busy appearing in all the Defender stuff to to <laughs> make time for Punisher. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, uh, and w- while we're talking about the Defenders, the biggest bomb drop that oh they had God. happen at the entire conference was they ended the panel by walking out Sigourney Weaver, and she will be your main villain of the Defenders. That's insane. That shows you how far Marvel has gotten. That shows you how far Netflix has gotten, because Marvel and Disney locked up Sigourney Weaver, and they can only use her once. 99 times out of 100 outside of the girl from Luke Cage who was used twice. Uh, But with Sigourney Weaver, they didn't use her for a movie. They used her as the main villain of one of the Netflix TV shows they have. That's astounding. I I, I can't even begin to imagine who she's playing. It almost doesn't matter just because it's Sigourney Weaver. They've done such a good job, especially my biggest thing and why i love the netflix shows so much and why because i love villains and the netflix tv shows and agents of shield crush most of the movies on villains most of the yes. movies by comparison are dog shit with the villains yeah the, the really besides loki we 
haven't really hashed out any of the villains. We did a good job, better jobs on some than others, but Loki is really the only one that we have ever hashed out or he explored. Was, he was honestly, because Bucky doesn't really count. Yeah. Bucky's Bucky. Uh, yeah, just the straight up villains, they've all been kind of worthless for the most part. So, you're telling me fucking Sigourney Weaver is the next one? Holy shit, dude. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's, oh my god. In it, she doesn't really do TV either. No, she does not. So that means what they gave her on the script or, you know, like in the meetings in order to get her to sign has to be, you know, juicy too. Yeah, no. So I, 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 I'm cannot. pretty curious what we're get, what she, what they're doing with her and how many xenomorphs the Defenders will have to kill. Dude, Luke Cage is the only one that can do it. Their acid blood will melt anyone else. It's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> well, what is that? Just bring in Burnthal with a Gatling gun? Be no fucking problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, 2017. Fuck you, 2016. Give me 2017 <laughs> right now. So bad. And our last thing to talk about with New York Comic Con the thing we've all been waiting for, Ron. <laughs> the thing you have been chomping at the goddamn bit. Class has arrived, Ron. Are you excited? Finally. Uh, Are you excited? I didn't think it would ever get here. Um, I, don't, I don't even know where to begin. No, what's what's funny is the trailer for it starts out with a warning that I wholeheartedly agree with. Contains some violence and upsetting images. This whole trailer, <laughs> this whole trailer was an upsetting image. I couldn't have said it better myself. That was good. Touche, good sir. Yeah, it was... Oh my god, this trailer. All they did was take the idea of Kyle XY and throw it into Torchwood. That's all they did. And I thought it was supposed to be... Clara's class, but she never See, taught I thought that anyone too, that. but it looks like they're using a an unrelated class who's also at the same school. It's the same... It, it is... It, it is it, the same school. It's the same school, but they're like high schoolers. She taught like middle school. Yeah, unless they're trying to say that like this is some of them a few years later. But I don't know. We're, we're trying to justif- justify bullshit, so it's kind of pointless. Yeah, this show... I mean, it's got good graphics because it has some budget behind it, but... It just... What really, what really pisses me off about class isn't the quality of class it's itself what it's they could have what done what they could be doing instead of it that's yes. really the point um and i love how everyone's freaking out that capaldi's in the first episode of course he's in the first fucking episode the they only way get, they could get anyone to watch would have been to put capaldi in it yeah exactly they got to get you going they got to get you there for some reason yep they got to hit the member berries jeff Member Capaldi. <laughs> member the TARDIS. I remember. Uh, Dude, watching that show, I will need to go on Amazon and order some member berries. Yeah. I, I guarantee you that's up there. That's where I find um, everything I want. Yeah, are you going to watch the first episode just for the Capaldi stuff? Probably. I'm going to watch. I feel like I can't properly hate this without watching it. And it's probably going to be my new favorite show. Iron Fist in class is what we keep saying. <laughs> number one and number two, 2017. <laughs> Fuck but, Doctor uh, Who. I'm watching class. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who is horseshit. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what else to say about class. Speaking we've of talk- Jeff, I'm almost I'm honestly sick about talking about class because we talked about class so much in the we, show. We've mentioned it like four times. <laughs> um, speaking of Doctor Who, though, um, do we have a date for the Christmas special? Obviously December, but are they usually on they, the 25th? I, I think they actually usually put them on Christmas. Okay, cool. So at the very least, we'd be getting them like, I don't know how they do BBC America stuff, but we at the very latest would be getting them like what the next day or do they do simultaneous release on BBC I, America? I think they're simul. I think they're simulcast. 
just because Doctor Who is so big now. Yeah, because it's so big. I think it's on BBC America and BBC One. I want to say they either put them out directly on Christmas or on Christmas Eve, or I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't. I don't honestly remember because the last season was the first season I ever watched episode by episode weekly. So I don't know. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot you guys had binged. Um, yeah, we binged all the way up to that point. So, but yeah, um, that's going to be the only thing Doctor Who related that we get this year. But the next season is next year, so we get that in 2017 also. Yeah, it's in like spring at some point. I think they've said. Yeah, spring in 2017. So it's going to be fucking like May, like the last technical day of spring. <laughs> Because Doctor Who operates like fucking like video games, like it's oh, I know. got delayed so many times. Um, yeah. If I watch, I'm at least gonna at the very least I'm gonna YouTube the Capaldi scenes, and then if you watch it and you in the zero point five percent chance say that it was solid, I will watch the first episode just for the Capaldi scenes. But it's almost like the principle of the thing. That I can almost, ref- I almost refuse to like it. No matter what, whether I watch it or not, it's gonna get amazing ratings on the first episode. So I might as well watch it. It's not like, like, oh, I don't want to give them ratings. But it doesn't matter if I watch or not. They're gonna get all the ratings that they wanted because they have Capaldi on there. So, but yeah, I'm gonna at least gonna watch the first episode. I expect it to just be absolute cash grab. I expect it to make absolutely Speaking no sense. Speaking of CW angst, that's what this is going to be. Yes. In a big, bad way. Dawson's uh, Creek was, with Capaldi. Yeah. Uh, looks like we got one bit of news. Actually, got some gaming news while we're talking about it. Fuck yes. The PS4 controller, which is a DualShock 4, which is will have fantastic. native support on Steam. This was a little bit mind-blowing to me. It's funny that they're going to support one of the controllers that directly competes with their own. I, I get, I get the 360 controllers because Microsoft and PC gaming and and all that. But it is a little bit mind blowing that people will straight up buy software to allow them to use the DualShock Four through USB port on yeah. their computer. And they're they're gonna go ahead and add the 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 support for it because the the thing that I saw on that adapter and everything else was no games support it except for what is it remote play and PS Now is that what it yes. is? Um, so nothing else supports it at this point. Steam has a hell of a catalog for games and. They have basically all of the catalog. <laughs> they have basically all of the catalog. And what is so funny is that the uh, the Xbox games that get simultaneously re- released to PC will be played with the PlayStation controller. <laughs> Take that, that how Microsoft. Far this generation has come. Oh, I know. Yeah, dude, um, I'm pretty excited because that controller, I'm holding one in my hands right now, and it is just... Uh, whispering sweet everything. nothings to it oh, i know oh oh yes all right we need to wrap this up we need to wrap this up <laughs> why because i'm stroking he a is, controller he is touching the no-no place on the touchpad it's a touchpad jeff that's what it's show for us, show us where the dual shock four we're on touched you <laughs> <laughs> on that note we were talked about uh, talking a little bit about what we thought of Luke Cage, but we ran a little long. Do we want to tack that on here, or do you want to do a separate little Luke, pa- Luke Cage pod? Depends on how much you want to talk about Luke Cage, I guess, because we had talked about doing spoiler-free, so if you wanted to do a re- uh, like a 20, 30-minute review of it, you know, but if we were just going to mention what we thought about it real quick. Let's, let's actually do the, the separate pod, and then we'll use this as a plug. The most awkward plug of all time. <laughs> plug in like real check time. Out, if you would like to check out our poorly planned Luke Cage podcast, that will also be up on the channel. 
<laughs> poorly planned is our tagline for this podcast. Poorly planned, one hundred percent of the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you'd like to check us out more, please like and subscribe. That gets you all of our content. In addition to our news podcast, we also do let's plays and a Game of Thrones show. And eventually later this year, or maybe like in the next decade when they eventually do Doctor Who, we're probably going to be doing a Doctor Who show as well. We have social media links below if you're curious about those. And most importantly, if you know anyone else that might also like our content, we would really, really appreciate it if you would share us out. I'm Jeff. I'm Ron. And we will catch you guys next time.